Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Nature in Place Off the Shelf. My name is Nate Meyer, and this week we're going to do things just a little bit differently. First of all, I'm going to be talking about a different dimension of nature writing, poetry. Secondly, this one's going to be a twofer. I'm going to talk about two well-respected nature writers and poets, Mary Oliver and Patty Ann Rogers. And finally, at the end of the video, in addition to some suggested reading, I'm going to suggest that you take a stab at writing your own nature poetry. The poet Mary Oliver was born in 1935 and published hundreds of poems before she passed away in 2019. She's a best-selling poet in her own right, but also one of the most widely known and respected nature poets. In 1984, she won the Pulitzer Prize for her collection of poems called American Primitive that blurred the lines between nature and self. In addition, Mary Oliver often taught poetry to college students and was awarded five honorary doctorates from different institutions. Mary Oliver spent her childhood in a suburb around Cleveland, Ohio, and in her adulthood moved out to New England, and her poetry is rich in detail in exploring both of those places. In fact, one poet reviewer called her a persistent guide to nature. To give you a small flavor of Mary Oliver's work, I'd like to read you a few stanzas from her poem, Skunk Cabbage, that appeared in both her volume one of New and Selected Poems that won the National Book Award, as well as the American Primitive that won the um, Pulitzer Prize. This poem captures a walk into the springtime woods and happening upon a skunk cabbage. And in the beginning, Oliver describes her discovery of the skunk cabbage in great detail. She talks about new leaves unfolding and describes the brash, turnip hearted skunk cabbage. She talks about the smell being lurid and flowing out in a most unabashed way, and eventually describes the plant as appalling its rough green caves. But in the end, she concludes by saying, But these are the woods you love where the secret name of every death is life again, a miracle wrought surely not of mere turning, but of dense and scalding reenactment, not tenderness, not longing, but daring and brawn. Pull down the frozen waterfall, the past, ferns, leaves, flowers, the last subtle refinements, elegant and easeful weight to rise and flourish. What blazes the trail is not necessarily pretty. And in that last line, what blazes the trail is not necessarily pretty. We capture Mary Oliver's unique capability to bridge both the human and the nature experience. The poet Patty Ann Rogers was born just a few years after Mary Oliver, and in a similar career trajectory has also published hundreds of poems and many collective works. She's a winner of both the Leanne Award for her writing, but also in 2018 won a special Lifetime Achievement John Burroughs Award for her poetry. Patty Ann Rogers lives in the Western United States, and most of her poems are grounded in that environment. But much like Mary Oliver, her poems tend to be very observational in nature, based on exploring the natural world around her. And one of the things that I've so enjoyed about Patty Ann Rogers' work is her attention to learning different aspects of nature around her. To give you a small flavor of Patty Ann Rogers' poetry, I'd like to read just a few passages from her poem, In Order to Perceive, that appeared in her collected works called The Firekeeper. In this poem, she describes coming to know nature more deeply over time. I believe she's actually talking about learning to recognize the constellations and the stars in the sky. And at the beginning of the poem, she starts at the beginning of coming to know that space. She says, At first you see nothing. The experience is similar to opening your eyes wide as white marbles. 
Then she goes on to describe someone pointing things out. And eventually she says, then you're able to recognize when you are shown the sparks flying from the mane of the black stallion. And then she goes on to describe, then you begin to notice things for yourself. But at the end of the poem, she describes that moment where you really become one with that natural milieu. She says, Soon there is no hesitation to the breadth of your discoveries, until one night during the long intensity of your observation, you look so perfectly that you finally see yourself off in the distance, among the glittering hounds and hunters beside the white shadows of the swans. There are points of fire at your fingertips, a brilliance at the junctures of your bones. You watch yourself floating, your heels in their orbits, your hair spreading like a phosphorescent cloud as you rise slowly. A skeleton of glass beads above the black desert, over the lantern hillsides and out through the hollow, stretching directly overhead. So at the end of this passage, you see something almost like Mary Oliver's work, where Patty Ann Rogers captures that moment of human nature connection in great and vivid detail. Another neat thing about Patty Ann Rogers is that she's a poet naturalist who's also very involved in public education and outreach. In the comments, I'll post a link to an exhibit that she worked on at the Milwaukee Zoo, where she curated a set of over 50 interpretive signs that all use poems from different poets to help interpret the landscape and the animals at the zoo. It's a really cool project. So how about an opportunity for some armchair advanced training? In the comments, I'll share some links to more information about Mary Oliver and Patty Ann Rogers, as well as links to read some of their work and explore some of their projects. This week, I also encourage you to try writing your own nature poetry. It may be uncomfortable, it may be difficult, but I encourage you to give it a shot. And in the comments, I'll post a link to a nice article with some activities and prompts that can get you started. I'll also share my own attempt at writing some nature poetry. As always, I encourage you to use the comments to share the work that you enjoyed by Mary Oliver or Patty Ann Rogers, or let us know about other writers and nature writing that you'd like to learn about. And finally, I encourage you, if you're adventurous enough, to share your own attempts at nature poetry and other nature writing. It would be great to see what we can create together. I hope you have a great week.